Low lorises are some of the most adorable creatures on Earth. But their looks are their downfall, as demand for slow loris pets and props in the tourism industry increases. Slow lorises are internet sensations. There's no shortage of viral videos with pet owners showing off their adorable, tickle-loving, umbrella-holding, pole-dancing primates. But this is not their true nature, and the trade in lorises is threatening their numbers and driving them to the brink of extinction. Slow lorises are native to the forests of Southeast Asia. As their name suggests, they don't move fast and even have a unique muscle structure that allows them to stay very still for long periods of time. They're also nocturnal, and a light reflecting layer in their eyes means they can see in complete darkness, an amazing adaptation. But it doesn't protect them from being easy targets for poachers. While there's no denying that these endearing creatures are charming, they are wild animals with natural instincts. And when pet owners realize this and no longer want their lorises, they get rid of them. Nancy Gibson from the Love Wildlife Sanctuary in Thailand explains why having a loris as a pet is a really bad idea. Wildlife is wildlife. They get aggressive, they bite, sometimes they stink, sometimes you know they grow too big and then when it comes down to it people can't handle it and then they have to give them up. They either abandon them, they release them to the wild somewhere where they can't survive, they don't know how to hunt, or they dump them on government centers and sanctuaries that have to care for them for the rest of their life. I guess it also bothers me that people aren't aware or don't even think about the fact that they, it is wildlife and don't see that there is a problem. I'm seeing a lot of babies being sold either on the internet or even in the markets, in like Jetsu Jack Market. Usually they're taken from the mother. Mothers are either shot or they take the mother as well and sell the mother as well. The situation isn't made any better by celebrities like Rihanna, who tweeted this picture of herself posing with a slow loris. Photoprop is one of the major ones, actually. You can find them along the streets in Pattaya. You can find them in Phuket. They do get a lot of money from tourists that come. Sometimes they don't know that these animals are endangered or they're protected in Thailand. They're actually illegal on the streets. They're nocturnal animals. They don't like a lot of light. So you can imagine they're snapping photos of them. There's flashes going into their eyes. They're very, very shy animals being passed back and forth from person to person. So it's actually quite stressful for them. The other group is Oh my god, they're not supposed to be there. They end up buying the loris thinking they're rescuing the loris. They're not rescuing. They're feeding the trade once again. Slow lorises are also unique amongst primates. There's a gland on their arm that they lick, and when mixed with saliva, gives them the ability to deliver a bite that's potentially lethal to humans, if they're allergic. And there are documented cases of people going into anaphylactic shock after being bitten. Their tendency to bite with their needle-like teeth is one of the reasons why lorises in the pet industry often have their teeth clipped. Edwin Week of the Wildlife Friends of Thailand Sanctuary, which also takes in rescued lorises, sees this frequently. Lorises are, are primates, are night, nocturnal primates, night monkeys, and they are quite slow, but when they're agitated, they, they bite, just like most other wild animals. To make sure that once the animals bite, there's no severe, like real injury to the people, they uh, cut these teeth out, so um, they don't have these long canine any longer. You know, the loris is a small animal, and you could actually clip the teeth with nail clippers. This little guy was brought into the WFFT sanctuary after being electrocuted by a power line. He's going to be okay, but he still needs a medical, and his teeth checked. There's two things that we can do with these lorises. Um, we can fill up the teeth if the infection is not that bad. In some cases, the infection goes all the way to the root, then we have to distract the, the teeth. The consequence of all this is, of course, that the animals cannot be returned back to the wild. Looking after wild animals and rehabilitating them so they have a chance to be released back into the wild requires specialized care. The dedicated vets and volunteers at the WFFT clinic ensure the creatures receive exactly that. This rescued Loris needs a procedure done. He had 
a wound on his finger. He was on antibiotics for that and he had a reaction to the antibiotic injections. Is he going to survive? Yeah, yeah, we just need to stitch those okay. shut. Looks terrible. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that bad and then the scab came off and it looked terrible. With the wound attended to and stitches in place, Dolores is on the road to recovery. As if slow lorises didn't have enough problems already, they're also widely used in traditional Asian medicine. Slow loris wine, made from live lorises drowned in vats of liquid, is believed to ease the pain of childbirth, and their bones are used in a number of medicines that treat a wide range of ailments. Most species of loris are classified as vulnerable or endangered. With their numbers dwindling drastically in the wild, the illegal trade of slow lorises for traditional medicine and tourism needs to end. Thailand is a country with millions of visitors every year and people are being pulled into the exploitation of wildlife all the time, whether it be riding elephants, making pictures with wild animals. Tourists should realize that these animals are taken from the wild, from the wild, from their parents, from the nature, to be exploited for tourism. If you make a picture with an animal like this and pay for it, you are facilitating illegal wildlife trafficking and poaching. So the best thing is, if you see it, don't take a photo. Don't buy them. Rescuing or not rescuing, you're not helping. There's also still so much for scientists to learn about these shy, elusive little creatures. We may never know their secrets, because it may be too late. The future of the slow loris lies in the hands of education. The more people who know about their plight, the more chance they have of surviving. <laughs>